Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Icon Elevate. It's my great pleasure today to welcome Dr. Paul Vasey. Paul, welcome to Icon Elbow. Wonderful to have you here with us. Pleasure. Can't wait to hear your story. And I know the team at Icon is going to be fascinated by not only your original career choice, but also your new <laughs> career choice. Um, and Icon Elevate's about sharing these great stories. So the first thing I wanted to sort of talk to you about, Paul, was um, you arrived in Australia in 2004, mm -hmm. I believe. You've been a medical oncologist and a researcher with ICON. Um, my team told me for several years, it's actually for many mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. um, what have been the highlights of the medical career thus far? I guess most of the highlights were before I came here, when I was um, in the UK. So I was the director of Cancer Research UK's second biggest research unit in, yep. in Glasgow. and. In the five years that I was director, we received the uh, highest award that Cancer Research UK, Cancer Research yeah, wow. UK have. It's called the um, the Alpha Star, and wow. we got full funding for five years. So that was that was a real feather in my cap. And at the same time, I was doing a lot of research into gynae cancer, and I became chairman of the Scottish Gynecological Cancer Trials Group, which is equivalent of the USGRG. We had lots of international studies, um, European and America. And out of that, um, I was protocol author on a number of big randomized trials and ended up having some presentations in ASCO. Uh, so that's, I mean, career highlights don't get much much better than that for me. The Alpha Star. Um, yeah. It's right now. Yeah, Alpha Star. Uh, <laughs> it's good. And then obviously I came over here and a whole different career change uh, in terms of, you know, wanting to transition into private practice and get yeah. a more patient-centric. Yep. Uh, view and also some lifestyle changes. I brought my young family over here. Um, should have done it 20 years earlier, but there you go. Um, and the highlights were actually joining Icon. I spent two, three years at the Royal Brisbane, just continuing, you know, being a public oncologist and trying to get my sort of foot into research there. And then realised that you know this was where um, I wanted to be. And um, yeah, it was actually John Bashford who first. Uh, introduced me to Icon and he saw me with the lanyard around my neck and the Royal Brisbane said, get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> so that, was, that great, was great story. No, and you've had an amazing career thus far. Now, I think a lot of the team will be aware, but some of the team won't be aware. That you're actually also a published author of best-selling science fiction novels, which for me is um, one of the great things about people in our team is finding out these new things and these new skills and that's a pretty significant achievement. So how does a medical oncologist become a best-selling science fiction author? Yeah, it's a funny story. I mean, I spent, you know, most of my youth watching science fiction movies and reading sci-fi books and I was just, I love with the, the genre. And, you know, like everyone, you think you've got a book in you. I never had the time being a, being a doctor and all that stuff. And then I had a serious bike accident yeah. in 2014 when I was over here. I was in France and I was in the Wesley for two weeks um, and then I couldn't ride for about three months and I thought, oh, I'll write that book. So I put pen to paper, started writing and finished this book. It's called Trinity's Legacy and I had this idea for a trilogy. I thought, well, it'll never get beyond the first book. So I wrote the first book and then self-published it and, and it did really well and it got it won a couple of awards. So I thought, I've got to continue. So I did book two, book three, finished the trilogy. Um, and then I've, you know, I'm on, I've done the fourth book now and it just, just goes from there. It's still a hobby. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not going to, I'm not J.K. Rowling. I think I've still got to work for a living. Do you, the names of the books, so the first one is called? So Trinity's Legacy. Yep. And then Trinity's Fall. Yep. And then Trinity Evolution. Yep. So that was an encapsulated trilogy that I did. And you said it, that you always had the view that it would be a trilogy? I had an idea for the arc of the story, yeah. um, but <clears throat> when I'd finished, I'd written 90,000 words in the first book, I thought, I've got to stop there and see how it goes. And I, you know, I, I got it sort of reviewed and, um, and then published. But I had an idea, I mean, that was never going to be the end of the story. But if the book hadn't done well, that would have been the end of it. And it would have been one of those you know, great unfinished trilogies. Uh, in my mind, anyway, yeah, no. uh, and so that's yeah. So it just be, because it did well, I managed to write the rest of it. Yeah. What did the family think when you said I'm going to be a science fiction? Author? Oh, they didn't mind. I mean, 
I've I've enjoyed watching all the Marvel movies and all the Lord of the Rings movies with my two daughters. Yeah, absolutely. And we, <clears throat> I mean, it was only a couple of years ago that my youngest daughter and I watched every Marvel movie from start to finish. Oh wow! So they've always known how <laughs> sad, what a sad geek I am, and they're just a sad geek. geek. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I'm a sad geek too, as you know. And um, do you have any? Super science fiction fans who follow your books who are real fans. Oh, I wish I don't know. I'm not that well known. One of the one of the problems, one of the only problems I think living in Australia is the market is small yeah. over here, and it was I found it really really hard to get an agent and to get it published because you know you either had to live in the UK or live in the United States, and it's you know in order to sell and to get those big market um, sales you've got to be in one of those markets and it's been hard i mean i've got a publisher in the states for my latest book yeah but they don't have an australian distributor <clears throat> so oh, it's wow. kind of i'm i'm, I'm back yeah, to yeah. front now but it's an evil it's an evolving process yeah, that's good now you mentioned you've just published your fourth book what can you share with the team the story its inspiration you've done a trilogy this is a new story this is a standalone yeah. Um, oh, it feeds into all my favourite themes: alien invasion, um, <clears throat> artificial intelligence, end of the world, all that stuff. But <clears throat> I try to build in a more sort of family orientated personal story because it's all, all also about <clears throat> bereavement, loss. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That's, 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 <laughs> this is this is the life of a very very busy medical oncologist. Yeah. Apologies. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, th there is a human element to it about relationships, and th the main the main character <clears throat> has lost his wife, but has she really been lost? And that's yeah, well. the sort of um, you know there's a little sideline in there, but it becomes a major link to the story. So <clears throat> it's as I say, it's a standalone book. It could it could le lend itself to another sequel, but I'm halfway through the next book, and it's nothing to do with this one. So yeah, well. I may come back to it. Yeah, and for the team at Icon, these are all available. On yeah. a, at all online booksellers? They're all online. <coughs> so Amazon sells them all. Um, the hardbacks are being distributed through Mascot, which is an American publisher. Um, and you can get all the hardbacks of the others uh, through Amazon at the moment. Yeah. So, Paul, what are you most excited about for the future? What what <coughs> what is exciting for Dr. Paul Vasey moving forward? Well, I guess personally. I'm looking forward to travelling more yep. now that you know COVID's behind us. Um, but professionally, <clears throat> I've been well. If we look back at the last 30, 40 years of, of oncology, um, <clears throat> when I started as an oncologist, patients with metastatic tumour, stage four cancers, and we're talking about the epithelial cancers, the common cancers, you yep. know, breast, lung bowel cancer, nobody with stage 4 cancer survived. And now, in the last 5-10 years, that's changed. It's about 10% of patients now survive. And it's predominantly due to immunotherapy, which is yep. very exciting at the moment. And we're getting better at it. And the reason I think it, the next 5-10 years is going to be very exciting is that what we know about cancers and epithelial cancers is that 80% of them produce novel antigens or you know things that are like red flags for our immune system to hit and the reason we're not curing 80% of patients is that our immune cells are still not able to recognize them well enough so not enough of them are able to kill these yeah, red wow. flags and that'll change and you know the, the current PD-1 inhibitions are you know the sort of forefront the spear of the you know the, the spear of the war against them so it's going to be very exciting five ten years I think wow so it's a it's a really an exciting field for all of our team mm. working in which is wonderful. So I don't want to retire until we get to no, that. No, well, yeah, well yeah, let's, I, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I'm listening to 10 years, not five, 10 years, uh, which is great. Now, Paul, um, I reckon this would be a pretty obvious question. What book do you recommend I read? Mine? Yeah. Well, <laughs> all four. <laughs> all four. How long will it take um, me to read all four? I well, will read them. The trilogy, I'm actually redoing the trilogy to a one epic volume. Oh, wow. Like, you know, the Lord of the Rings or something like that. Yeah, wow. Vast ambitions. So maybe wait until I've published oh, that as a oh, runoff because it's going to be tighter. Um, but yeah, you know, you can read it in your spare time. No, exactly. You have no spare time here. <laughs> I do love reading. Mm. I love reading. And um, I will read it. I'll make that commitment to you. Um, in your life, and this is a question I ask all of our guests, 
Who's inspired you to be your best? Oh, I don't know, it's a tricky one, that, but I think I'm going to give you the crass answer, which is true, and say it's my patients. I want to do the best wow. for them. They inspire me to give them the most up-to-date treatments, um, to be on my game, to be up-to-date with research. Uh, I think I owe them that. And, you know, I see, you know, some incredible stories about people who, yeah. who I will never understand how they get through what they do. And seeing that, it actually does inspire. And you'd be silly not to be in this job and not say that. So I think that's the truth. That is a great answer. That is a great answer. I think it might be the first time we've heard that answer in these interviews. Um, now, this will age you a little bit. Um, and uh, the first music album you ever bought, and I'm sure it was on vinyl. It was. It was. So I, so I was probably 14. And you're going to hate this because it's not your style. Because I know what your <laughs> style of music is. So it was the first album by Public Image Limited, <clears throat> 1978. It was John Lydon. John Lydon. Yeah, and John the Lydon. Sex Pistols had broken up. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was really heavily into punk. Well, loving the music. I was 14, yeah, so wow. I couldn't be a punk. Yeah. <clears throat> Although I did have a safety pin at one point. <laughs> but uh, I bought that, and the reason I, and I had to sneak it because my mum, who was a Catholic, wouldn't let me buy anything that had swear words on it, oh, right. and particularly anything to do with that. So I had to sneak it under the radar. I used to borrow my friend's record. That was the first one I bought. Yeah, well. It was terrible. I, it's still a bad album, no. but it was the first one. And do you still listen to vinyl? Yeah, I have a record player. Yeah, me too. I got yeah. one for Father's Day. Yeah, oh, I saw gift. that. Yes. Amazing yeah. gift. So, no, look, it sounds different. So, yeah, no. I, have you still got that album? No. No, okay. That <laughs> <laughs> was the first one. Now, um, Again, you talked earlier that you love travelling. Mm. Best holiday destination. Favourite holiday destination? Maui. Yeah, nice. Mm. Been there a couple of times. Went there. I did um, a lecture tour once there when I was in, in the UK and stayed at um, the Four Seasons and Arnold Schwarzenegger was there. Oh, wow. And I was in the gym and he was pumping iron and he was showing everyone how to wow. pump iron. I was too scared to walk up. And there. was he an enormous man? Yes. Wow. Oh, he had a T-shirt on. He was just, you know, a, a rock. Yeah. Um, but I, but I went, then went back to Maui with my wife, and then went back with the family. And I just love the island. It's, it's an amazing yeah. place. And Hawaii is lovely. It's not America. It's America, but not America. Yeah. No, I love Hawaii too. We've never been to Maui. Mm. Um, it's not going through such a great time now. No, it's not. That's true. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. But you can cycle all around it. That's yeah, the thing. Well. And on Maui, they've got this. Um, they've got the, the tallest, longest concreted hill climb in the world it goes up a volcano yeah wow and it takes you about four hours to get up 50k climb so i did that when i was there of course yeah, wow. as you do no now last question paul i know and you've just alluded to it you love cycling the best for all the cyclists out there at Icon, and there is a lot mm. best place in the world to cycle oh france france definitely there's so many Iconic climbs, you've got to tick them all off. And once you've done Arc d'Huez or the Galibier or Tourmalet and you recognize the, you know, the tops and the, uh, the, uh, those uh, descents and, you know, there's nothing better than that. Yeah. It's, they're hard, but, but, you know, you can, the beauty about cycling is that you can ride the same routes of all those professionals, all those heroes, whereas, it, you know, it's hard to play, you know, cricket on lords if you're a, you know, That's true. a cricket fan. I mean, yeah. you can you can golf certain, you know, of the championship course, but some you can never get on, like you never play golf at Augusta. But cycling, there's no way you can't cycle that, you know, Lance Armstrong, let's say somebody's name <laughs> we shouldn't talk about. Well, he's been rehabilitated. That's right. Um, but yeah, no, I think great answer. Fun. Great answer. Dr. Paul Vasey, thank you for joining us on Icon Elevate. And I think for everyone, uh, Paul's a great example of following your dreams. And, um, you know, for those of you out there who dream of writing a book or dream of doing those amazing cycling trips in France, Paul's the guy to speak to. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.